Okay, hey there, strangers. It's time for another 2 p.m. PST Twitch stream. I'm your host, Strange Bro Jim, and today we are going to be getting back into Pega. Now, we have attempted data objects and data relationships. Having a little bit of difficulty there. Um, so for those of you that are watching on YouTube, you know, or watch, watching this video on YouTube, um, you know, if you're catching this video like right now, kind of thing, before going through my older and uh, the my older videos, um, I have a lot of my understanding of, I guess, data in general um, has been very problematic. Um, I haven't been able to get um, um, a solid foundation of it. Uh, it feels like they're... Uh, they're not really uh, separating out the keywords very well. Or at least, you know, or at least they're maybe they're not explaining that well to me as to what is kind of going on um, with the topic. So therefore, I'm not really understanding it very well. Now, this could be just myself I'm, I'm just having some difficulties with it so i'm not really grasping um um maybe there's some like little key factor in there that i'm just not latching on to that you know helps everybody else out i don't know I'm not quite sure um so it could be the fact that my previous experience with my programming and stuff like that has just kind of skewed my my perspective maybe i'm very tunnel focused right at this moment in time it's quite possible okay i'm you know um you know i can't really uh you know i'm not gonna be like oh yeah i definitely know what the heck is going on or you know I'm, at least at least i'm not like that and you know i'm not like you know oh you know i'm right they're wrong you know blah 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 right at least we're not there Okay. Um, but, um, or at least I'm trying not to. <laughs> um, so, uh, today we're going to be working on the module quiz. Uh, we have 10 minutes to complete it. Uh, if everything goes well, then we'll get through it fairly quickly and then we'll maybe move on to the next portion of the um you know of the modules you know there's there's a creating a data relationship you know 15 minutes so this i don't know if i'm going to be able to get to that today but we'll see we'll see what happens we'll see how quickly i can get through this module quiz so um now for those of you that are watching me on twitch right now um know that you know i am not a you know i'm i'm not a you know i'm not a professional trainer through pega hey there bigfoot welcome back there but um uh, welcome back there bud uh how's your day ben um so don't don't feel like I'm I'm someone that is doing the instructor led training. Okay, that's not me. Okay, I'm not a I'm not an authorized training partner in this particular case, okay? Um I'm working on trying to get the system architect certification. So that's that's where I'm going for. Um there's also the business architect certification that you can try for. So uh, which is very similar to the system architect, 
but not as in depth. So, uh, I have one mission left and I'm done with my star chart. I keep failing it. No worries there, bud. We'll take care of it when, uh, when I start up the Warframe in a couple hours. So, I'll be there. <laughs> Go ahead and leave it for now. We'll we'll tackle it when I get there. You know, go and um, work on some of the other content that's that's available. Break some relics. Uh, try to farm warframe parts and and the like. So, okay. Um. So, um. So I'm I'm working towards the certification. Okay. I'm not endorsed by Pega. Just just letting you know, I'm not endorsed by Pega. Pega really doesn't have any real knowledge that I'm really doing this. Um, or if they do, then they're being very quiet. <laughs> um, at least they're answering my suggestions and stuff like that, trying to fix the suggestions. So so that's that's nice. You know, I appreciate those. Um but um you know it'd be nice if they could like watch what i'm doing and you know either answer my questions or um you know figure out some edits that they can do on their topics to maybe make things easier for the next person that might come down or you know might try to work through their missions and modules and so on and so forth. Who knows? Um, but you know they've they've stated the fact that you know they uh, uh, you know they are not they didn't you know they don't want to overload a person up with too much information either. So. Which, I don't know. Um, I feel like, you know, they sh um, like maybe, maybe have some sections in the topic section that basically says, hey, this part will be covered later or something. I got to blow my nose, be right back. Okay. Um So yeah. Um I just wanted to kind of put that out there so people don't like um don't look at me as though like I'm I'm like an official trainer or anything along those lines. Okay. I'm doing this for um well, in a sense my benefit first because i'm trying to get the certification but at the same time i'm recording it so that if anybody ever wants to um if they're trying to work towards the system architect certification themselves then they might see this playlist these youtube videos later and might want to tackle it themselves and might you know might benefit from these videos or something like that um but at the same time, if they are, um, if they are understanding some of these parts better than I do, then, you know, uh, I would, you know, I'm welcome to any, um, um, you know, advice or, um, like a re-explanation of some of these topics so that you know if you know maybe you know farther down the line you know it might help me out better understand some of this um but it might also help someone else out down the line so 
don't don't feel like you know oh i'm gonna add this in and it's just gonna help you know me out um no just put it down and someone else you know might look at that comment and go oh okay you know um you know this is this is how you think about it gotcha okay so um and i would still be appreciative of it okay um what i wouldn't be appreciative of obviously is if someone says are you stupid or something you know this is this is how you do it you know let's let's be um you know let's let's make sure that we have a friendly discussion <laughs> or something along those lines okay you know i once had a ta look at my code and go um this code is trash and then walked away i'm like okay i was asking for help that doesn't help me <laughs> You know, how do I know, you know, okay, my code is trash. Fine. Explain how I can fix it. You know, if you're a teacher's assistant, show me how to write the code better. You know, that's that's how you should approach it. If you're a teacher's assistant, you should help someone learn how to do things in a better fashion. Okay. Um, don't, don't look at them and go, Hey, you're, you know, you're doing this wrong and then not, not care about anything else beyond that. Okay. Show them, show them what they kind of need to do to improve. Okay. So, all right, be right back. I need to blow, blow my nose again. Why is my nose running like right when I need to? <laughs> work out this. Uh, oh well. Be right back. Reminds me of the time when, whenever mom would be, you know, finish eating lunch, she would always like sneeze uncontrollably over and over and over again. You know, at, at one point in time we were like on, you know, uh, you know, uh, you know, she, we would like, you know, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless <laughs> you. Um, but you know, we we got to a point where it's like, okay. Mom, uh, bless you for all the times you're going to be sneezing. <laughs> so, all right. I say that because I just had food like right before starting this. So, oh yeah, sorry. Uh, uh, tangent. Let's get into the quiz, shall we? Start the quiz. How many questions we got? Five questions. Gotcha. All right. In a pet registry case type. Users must enter the name of the pet in a data object. What field type do you configure to reference this information? Hmm. In a pet registration case type, users must enter the name of the pet in a data object. Okay, so it's not a query because we're not looking up information. We're not looking up data information. So it had to be either embedded data or user reference. And I'm thinking use, um, more towards user reference than embedded data. Um, so. Okay, user reference field type refers to a specific user assigned to the application. Gotcha, okay. I'll need to remember that. 
So now I'm not so sure. Okay, let's let's try and better data. I, once again, that would have been a wrong answer on the certification. I would have gotten that wrong. So that's that's not good. I have to hit these questions, you know, perfectly for the certification. So again, not great. The blank field type defines a field to access data stored in a data page. The blank field type defines a field to access data to users supply in the case. Um, okay, query for d access data stored and then metadata field type defines field to access data users supply in the case. That's what I'm thinking. There we go. Okay. Which statement about single record and multiple record data relationships is true? Data object can be used to establish either a single record data relationship or multiple record data relationship, but not both. No, no, that's, that's not true. I believe you can have, um, I think you can do that. So, Um, because data object can have, um, and, you know, can have links to like, um, you know, uh, you know, can have like fields that address like other objects that, you know, have like, you know, single references or multiple me uh, references. So, um, single data record, uh, single record data relationship stores data, multiple record data relationship does not store data. I don't think that's true either. What's, what's going on with that? You know, single record data relationship establishes a single entity grouping together related fields A multiple Record data relationship establishes a list of entities grouping related fields. Okay. Um, this this looks this looks true right now. Um, we'll see. A single record data reference can include multiple record data references, but a multiple record data reference cannot include single record data references. Uh, I don't think that's true either. So I believe this is really the only option out of the bunch, but we'll, let's check the feedback. Okay. Um, yeah, so, um, I mean, yeah, that, you know, a, you know, multiple record data reference, you know, you're, you're referencing other data kind of thing, but I mean, that data might have single record data references inside of it. So it's like, you know, that's, that's why I, I believe that one was wrong. So, you know, um, multiple record data relationships, stores data so that's that's not correct um and a data object you know should be able to handle and you know it has fields that handle like different you know different um you know can you know it handles like a single reference but it can also have like multiple references so so yeah Sometimes it's just a matter of, hey, you know, eliminate the ones that you know aren't correct. So, okay, that was weird. I don't know my, why my radio station was still on. 
a comedy routine, but whatever. Okay. Right. Um. Okay, drag the case type or data object name from the bottom to their appropriate location in the data hierarchy. You are designing the customer support request case type. The case type must support customers with multiple addresses and multiple credit cards. What is the appropriate way to set up the data structure? Okay, so, um, so support request case type, right? So support request case type. Um, so you need to have the customer data object with multiple addresses and multiple credit cards. So there you go. Okay, this tells me nothing. <laughs> uh, uh, drag the items in the bottom of, uh, to the appropriate drop zone. An airline reservation case type displays various flight options. Users see potential flights identified by flight number, airport codes, and flight price. The case type also displays the flight that you select. Okay, right, so... Um, which options are data objects and which are individual fields. Okay, so Okay, so so there's only one data object and there's three fields. So um Okay, so data object would be available for lights, the fields would be flight number, price, and airport codes. So uh, so these are the available for flights because they contain a flight number, the price, and the airport code for each and every single last one of them. Okay, so that's why they're a data object. So, so yeah, there we go. Now I'm feeling like I'm probably going to be missing the first one because I don't know if I got that one right. Let's see. Oh no, it gave it to me. Okay. Um so so I was right in the in, you know that for the second time, you know, on the on the module quiz, but let's let's go back and look look back this uh, up this information because obviously you know, I got it incorrect and I need to make sure that I know next time that we are using embedded data, you know, for the, um, you know, the users must enter pet name, right? So if I go here and I click it uh, on feedback, it says embedded data references a manually populated data object, such as an enter name or an address. The information is embedded in the case and is not referenced independently of the case. So, so if you, um, if you're at a point where you know you need to, you know, apparently enter in, um, Uh, values that will be populate, you know, that will populate the data object, then we use embedded data. So, okay. Um, okay, we are done with creating a data relationship here. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to have a lot of time for completing the challenge, but I mean, it's 2.30 right now. There's, and, um, 
I mean, I could probably try to go back through the data objects, but I, you know, I don't know. Uh, I'd be kind of beating my head up against the wall for that. Uh, I think what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to try the creating the data relationship here and just kind of go through um, all this information here to to try to build build everything here. So, uh, and we'll try to get through that in the 30 minutes. So, um, okay, so the mayor of my town asks you, the town and project manager, to enable residents who report problems online to enter contact information and list any previous issues at the same site. You need an embedded data field to the service request case type. The following table provides credentials you need to complete the challenge. We're prepping a instance for the PEGA. So uh, once again, I'm not going to be using the video here because it shows a step-by-step -step process of the challenge and we don't necessarily need to worry about that. Okay. Um, we're going to try to go through every single one of these steps, you know, according to what they do. So we're not, we don't want to skip any steps here. And we're going to see if we can get this same exact results. Okay. Uh, you know, there have been times where I haven't gotten the same exact results. So Log in. Hmm. All, right. All right, so um, detailed tasks. So create an embedded data, data field named submitter information. So in the navigation pane of the App Studio, under case types, we are going to click service request to display the service request case lifecycle. So now, um, you know, I mentioned this before, but, you know, uh, in the overview, it should show you the um, um, the case type down here as well. So if I click on that, it should open up the case type as well. Just, just want to point that out. Just want to make sure. So, I mean, you don't necessarily need to open up case types up there and click again. You know, clicking the service request here should open up the case lifecycle. So, you know, overview is meant to show um, a lot of. Um, you know, everything that's kind of going on with your, you know, with your case type, with your application. So, okay. So there's our service request case life cycle. Uh, in the service request case life, uh, case type, click the identify, uh, identify submitter step to open the step properties pane on the right. So, uh, identify submitter. So it will open up the panel on the right hand side and in the steps property pane, click configure view to configure the view of the step. So there we go. Okay, so there's no, f there's no fields right at this moment in time. So um, in the view configuration dialog box in the fields tab, click add field to add a field to the identify submitter view. In the field configuration window in the field name field, enter submitter information to name the field. So we're going to take that. We're going to do add field. And field name is submitter information. Uh, in the type field, click embedded, uh, select embedded data. In the data object list, select the person data object. So 
Uh, so here, I'm going to drop this down and click in metadata, which will open up some additional information here. For the data object, we're going to be selecting person. Okay, so click Submit to close the field configuration window. Click Submit to dismiss the view configuration dialog box. In the upper right, click Save. Okay, so um, we're not doing any kind of thing with the options, single records or listed records or anything like that. We're not touching the advanced, even though, you know, those are available. They really should try to explain that a little bit more, but we move on. Submit. Excuse me. That was just going to congest it again. So uh, we have the submitter information, data relationship, uh, options of auto. We have person. We have the view, create new view, open. I mean, they did not mention anything about any of this relative memory time. And I feel like that, I mean, they should at least address it. Okay. Like, hey. You know, what you'll see here is going to be covered at this particular module or something like that. You know, address it. Let people know. Because, you know, if you're if you're skipping steps, if you're like saying, hey, we're not worrying about this right now because we will cover it later. You know, let them know. Um, otherwise, you know, when are you when are you going to be covering that? You know. Uh, when are you going to be covering create new view, create default view? Are you going to open up this portion at all? Um, you know, what are the, you know, what's what's going on here for the auto and read only? You know, what's going on there? You know, um, you know what what search fields are we going to be looking at? You know, that kind of stuff, right? So, but they don't do that, so we click. Click submit. We come back to the case type, and they want us to click save. So I'm gonna go ahead and do do so. All right, we're all done with that. Click save. All right. In the service request case type, click the identify location step. In the step property pane on the right, click configure view. Uh, sorry about that. I keep on, yeah.
All right. Sorry about that. All right. Um, so, uh, uh, identify location step. And then we want to configure view on that one. Yes, we do. So, all right. In the view configuration dialog box in the fields tab, click add field. In the field configuration window, add the field name field and enter previous issues at this location to name the field. So we're not touching this address location required. Again, they should probably have mentioned that. Um, in the type list, select embedded data. In the data object list, select to find a new data object. So, so here we do embedded data. And for data object, we define a new data object. And the data object name issues to name the data object. All right. Click OK to close the dialog box. In the options field, select list of records. We're going that one. All right. Uh, click submit to close the field configuration window. In the fields tab, click add field to previous issues at, at this location. Add new field to add a new field to the data relationship. Okay, so uh, so we're gonna go ahead and you know we're uh, again ignoring the advanced. Click submit, and then we have the new embedded data at being added in, and it's. Um, they want me to add field to previous issues at this location. So, uh, in the field configuration window, in the field name, enter date to name name the field. Okay. Copy that. So we're so we're doing that. We're adding a new field. We're adding date. Uh, we're doing date only, and then we submit and add another. So, going date only, and it is date only, right? Yeah, date only. And submit and add another. Okay. Create two additional fields by using the information in the following table. Okay, so we're going issue as a text single line. So that's fairly easy to do. Issue, text single line, submit and add another. And then we do is resolved for Boolean. There we go. And once again, we're not, we're not doing anything with advanced. So, uh, and I doubt that we're going to be doing submit and add another for that last one. We just need to click submit. So, all right. So as you can see here, you have date issue and is resolved. Now here's the thing. What's going on with this one? Why is this here? And what's the issue with this one? They, they, to the right of the blank, to the right of the blank row, click delete icon to remove the row. Click submit to dismiss the view configuration dialog box in the, uh, in the upper right, click save to save your work. Okay, so they're basically saying, hey, for this field right here, just go ahead and delete it. Now, here's the thing, you know, uh, why even bother 
printing it in the first place? And why can't you modify it? You know, especially when there was, you know, when you had this add field here, you, you should have allowed for me to just modify this. Um, or maybe, maybe they did allow me to, or would have allowed me to modify that. I don't know. Um, but they want me to delete this blank row, so we do. Then we just need to submit and then save. So. Okay. Submitted and now we save. Okay. Now in the service request case type, click data model tab to confirm that your fields are displayed correctly. All right, so, and the data model. We should be seeing previous issues at this location with an ID of previous issues at this location. It's an embedded data, options of issues. So previous issues at this location, embedded data, issues, and then of course the My Town 311, right? So that's, that's perfectly fine. Um, now, as you can see here, it's kind of put in alphabetical order too. So let's make sure that it's in between notes and repair notes, right? Uh, it's in notes and repair notes. So we're good on that, okay? Um, next one is the submitter information. Submitter information, embedded data, person, my town 311, right? So submitter information, submitter information, embedded data, person, my town 311. So we're good there. Um, and it's between setup time and total time. So setup time and total time. So we're good there. All right, in the options column, click issues to see the data object details. So we're going to be clicking on that to view the information contained within issues. So, um, so we have the label. Um, so that's that's the standard for for that. Um, then we need to verify that you know all these are correct too. So we have date, date, date only, my town, right? So date, date, date only, my town. All right. Is resolved, is resolved, boolean, my town, issue, issues, text single line, my town, right? So. Is a result is a result boolean my town issue issues single text line my town so everything is looking good there uh, in the upper left click the back to previous page icon to return to the case lifecycle click on and click the data model tab to return to the service request data model okay so we're going back there's that we're going back to the data model and now in the options column, click the person to see the data object details for the person. There we go. Okay. I mean, we didn't we didn't modify the person object at all, so not quite sure why they wanted me to uh, click on it, other than maybe uh, uh, verifying that you know the object is indeed referring to you know the person details. But you know we didn't we never really you know we didn't really know what the person data object was prior, so. You know, how are we supposed to know that this is actually correct, right? Um, now, if we did, like, 
if we built the person data object prior in like maybe a pre um, previous uh, challenge, which actually I think we did. Um, di obviously a different instance, so we can't, you know, that doesn't really matter all that much, but um, so we just need to verify everything here is the same as what we're seeing here to make sure that it, it indeed is referencing, you know, all the, you know, fields of person. So in the upper left, click on back to previous page to return to the workflow tab. In the upper right, click save and run. So. So there we are. We do save and run. I'll take a second to go through that. In the report problem view, click continue to advance the identify location view. Yeah. Um, so, or probably you click continue. So, like that. Identify location. Identify location view, enter an address in the address field. And then identify location view, click add item to add several issues to the previous issues at this location field. So, um, let's see. Let's go ahead and use this address here that they're trying to give me. So, uh, 113 Main Street. Cambridge, Massachusetts. There we go. Continue. All right. Um, Oh, we're still in the identify location view. All right, let's go back. Right, so, so just a heads up there. The the map was so large that I I didn't necessarily see the previous issues at this location until after, obviously. So, um. So we need to add, you know, these, uh, you know, add these items in there. So, um, so one for 2021 puddle and none of the is resolved is, is done there. So, um, so we're adding another item. It was 131, 2021, uh, another pothole. At least I believe that, that was the date. Yeah, 131, 20, uh, 21. And then 615, 21. 615, 2021. And then we have road is still not pay repaid. Road is still not repaved. Okay, so that's all, all that. So we can go ahead and click continue. We are in the submitter information. Enter submitter information de details of Jane written and address. So Jane written what was it one one three Main Street uh, Cambridge 
Massachusetts. And then we're just doing a whole bunch of fives. Five, five, five. Five, five, five. Five, 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 five. There you go. Okay, they they kind of stopped it there, but they really should have like maybe finished off this this new service request. You know, um, you know, yeah, they were only just kind of focused on the identify location and identify um, you know. Uh, you know the submitter information and previous issues so I get it but at the same time um, you know I, I guess it doesn't really matter all that much so all right we're verifying the challenge And everything is done. Everything's good. So, okay, and that's it. You know, that's your creating the data relationship. So, tomorrow we're going to be doing routing assignments to users. Now, it's one topic, but it's 25 minutes. So we're going to be, well, 15 minutes of writing work. Oh, yeah. 10 minutes for the module quiz afterwards. Understandable on that one. All right. Uh, but that's it. Uh, we are going to go ahead and close on down on this one. Obviously, um, you know, if... Um, You know, um, you know, with this instance, feel free to, you know, do other things on here, you know, you know, mess with, mess with what you, you know, would like. So, So, find a new data object. Um, shoe. Okay. And then we do submit. Now, what I want to see in this particular um, work that we're that I'm doing right now is can I modify that first line that gets generated, right? Oh, I did. Uh, I did a single, not a list. So let's go ahead and cancel that out. Previous issues. Let's see. Uh, we're doing list of records. We're doing define. New data object. Oh wait, hold on. I just saw issue on there. See, this is what, and this is why you had to be really careful about, um, 
about how you build your application. Because I created the new data object in the previous one. So um, so they're basically saying, hey, you already created it. It's already it's already done. It's already available. So was, you should just go ahead and select it. So um, what the heck happened there? That was weird. All right. New data object. Um, we're going to say uh, let's just do pick a location. So list of records and that's that's all we really need to do, right? So submit. Okay, Pega, stop, stop closing the window out on me. So there you go. I deleted previous issues. And it's still saying, hey, we still got an, we still got, you know, previous issues ID. You know, that's one of the things that bugs me about Pega, is that, hey, you deleted this, but no, you didn't. It's like, come on, Pega. If I delete something, get rid of the you know, the, the, the background, you know, IDs and so on and so forth, or allow for me to overwrite those, um, those values again, because, you know, if I deleted them, you know, um, you know, it's for a good reason, right? You know, hey, I messed up on, you know, uh, set, you know, setting it to data relationship of a, you know, I wanted to do a list, but I did single and you're not allowing me to modify that. So now I have to change the field name that causes a problem when you're out in the real world, right? You know, because if you have a, you know, if you have a team that's basically saying, okay, we're, we're looking for you to create you know, this ID, you know, so that we can use it, you know, in other areas or something like that, you know, and, and what we're working on. And I make a mistake of like, oops, I forgot to set it to list, right? Well, now, how am I supposed to reuse it again? Okay. Um... So that's, that's what kind of bugs me about Pega. You know, you can, you know, when you're, when you're, work, you're working on Java code, you can modify things after the fact, okay? You know, you can modify class names and so on and so forth. You can modify it, okay? It's not set in stone, okay? So that's, that's what kind of irritates me about Pega is the fact that, you know, I can't modify these things afterwards. It's not deleting these um values you know under the hood you might say right
Let's see, I had to I had to modify the name here from previous issues to previous issue in order to build it. So Okay. I can't modify this at all. It's not allowing me to modify it. What's the per what's the point of having that there? <laughs> what's the point? Why why have it there? What's 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 with this? What is it supposed to be displaying? What field name is supposed to be there? Because you're not you're not you know, Pega isn't you know, showing like a default value there. Is it meant to be there, you know, the previous issue ID? Then it should state that. Um but yeah, okay, so apparently I can't I can't modify that at all. Now I might be able to do that, you know, within um you know here if I click on that, you know, I might be able to uh, well, apparently not. <laughs> um so you know now I understand why you need to delete it because I mean how how would this look you know in in your application if you can't modify it at all you're just going to basically have this one uh single text line that is only read only so it's going to be basically a field being displayed that you can't even you know put anything inside of it it's like What's the point? Why why are you why are you even referencing it? So I don't know. Um you know, Pega either allow for me to enter something in here and then I can say, Hey, I wanna add a add a nest, another field or don't put this in to begin with. You know. That's what I would say anyway. All right, well, that's it. Um, we are going to go ahead and close on down uh, for for today. We're going to be doing routing assignments for two users tomorrow. So, um, so yeah, uh, hopefully that, you know, you got, you know, I helped someone else out with uh, that challenge and the module quiz. Um, trying to figure additional information out. Um, but that's where we're going to go ahead and end our uh, Pega coding session. So these videos will be uploaded to my YouTube channel. Um, expect that, you know, this one particular one to be uploaded tomorrow. Um, or Actually, yeah. Uh, normally, I do editing for this particular video tomorrow, and then we'll have it ready f the next day. So, so this one would be not Monday, but Tuesday. So, okay. Right. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, then you know would love to have the you know normal style you know. Uh, you know, help me help me grow as a channel. You know, like, subscribe, follow, um, bell notification, share, all that jazz. You know, that would be of great help. Uh, also, um, you know, I have multiple videos concerning this uh, Pega study session that I'm doing. So if if you're still kind of interested in just what I'm doing with Pega, you know, got that playlist available for you if you want. Um, also, um, you know, um, if you would like, you know, I have other playlists as well. Um, you know, coding and um, and gaming, they're all there. <laughs> uh, you know. Um, and 
they're hardly ever edited, so you shouldn't have to worry too much about um, um, you know, I, are you going to be like missing content or anything on those sites? No, it's it's pretty much pure um, um, pure streams, hardly any editing. <laughs> uh if there are uh, if there is then it's typically like hey like i was on like i remember one time i was on the phone for like like good 15 to 20 minutes one time you know um but i was you know i didn't know how long i was going to be on the phone for so i tried to keep my stream running but it took a while so um so i edited that part out so um so yeah, um, it's not it's not that often, but I still do it from time to time. Um, but that's it. That's where we're going to end it. So um, for those of you that are still watching me on Twitch, I'm going to go ahead and switch on over to just chatting here. Uh, but for those of you watching YouTube, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording right now. So thank you very much for watching.